The Earth has been a living planet for nearly four billion years. In that time, nature has had to solve all the varied problems of life. Finding food, finding mates, moving around, and surviving in extremes. From the highest of mountain tops, to the freezing ocean waters. In the beginning, people were just another part of this breathtaking diversity. But our large brains began to set us apart from the natural world, as we used technology to solve the problems of life. That alienation made us extremely successful, but at great cost to our planet. Now we're beginning to see nature with new eyes. At the start of the third millennium, we stand on the brink of a new revolution, one where nature and technology stand hand in hand. The new science of biomimetics looks to nature for inspiration and is finding answers to our modern problems in totally unexpected ways, from how to move around to new materials and new ways of building them, and even how to solve the energy crisis. The answers are already out there, in nature. All we need is for nature and technology to work together. Nature has solved the problem of moving around in some wonderful ways. Legs, wings, and fins have all been invented by evolution many times. But all these creatures have one thing in common. They have to travel as economically as possible. Nature abhors waste. No creature that wastes energy will survive the unforgiving hand of natural selection. So we must be able to improve our own technology by looking at walking, swimming, and flying. But can scientists really learn anything new from nature? After all, we've come up with incredibly successful ways to travel around our planet. We can move faster than anything in nature. We can find our way with unerring accuracy. We can even build flying machines much bigger than anything nature could ever dream of. The biggest thing nature can get into the air is this swan. But it was birds that first gave humans the idea of flying. Dreaming of flight and actually taking to the air are two very different things. And despite imaginative ideas like those of Leonardo da Vinci, people would remain firmly earthbound for centuries. Then, around a hundred years ago, the dream finally took off.
Pioneers like German engineer Otto Lilienthal began to find ways of getting off the ground. Like Leonardo, he made detailed studies of birds. He reasoned that the shape and structure of the wings was vital to the bird's ability to fly, so he modeled his designs along similar principles. This was the right approach, though it would be many more years before anyone understood why his designs worked. The shape of birds' wings creates a spinning mass of air, a vortex around the wing. When the bird is moving forward, this circulation causes the air above the wing to move faster than the air below. The faster air moves, the lower its pressure. So this means that the air below the wing is at a higher pressure than the air above, creating an upward force, lift. The key to taking to the air. Of course, birds are much more complicated than that. They also flap their wings to produce forward thrust. A bird's wing is both wing and engine. Lilienthal's real bio-inspired breakthrough was to separate the problems of lift and thrust. He thought the only way to conquer the air was first to master gliding. Which he did with incredible success. In all, he made 2,000 flights. His pioneering flights laid the foundations for the next stage in aviation, a step taken in America by the Wright brothers. These two bicycle makers from Ohio made the first ever powered flight. But this first Wright flyer was almost impossible to control. This historic moment wasn't exactly a display of precision flying. The Wright brothers still had to work out how to steer their plane. A problem nature solved a long time ago. The goshawk has perfected the art of aerobatics. It hunts its prey through dense forests, so needs to twist and turn at high speed. It's impossible to appreciate its performance in the wild but slowed down a hundred times, its aerial skill is breathtaking. And birds also gave the Wright brothers their breakthrough. They didn't have the technology to look at how a goshawk maneuvered in flight. But all they had to do to find inspiration was to look up. Turkey vultures were a common sight around their home in Ohio. And these birds fly with a slow, lazy, gliding flight as they circle over the ground searching for carrion. It's much easier to see with the naked eye how they control their flight path. They seem to steer by twisting their wings. And the Wright brothers took this idea and applied it to their later planes. It worked so well that the Wright brothers were able to join the vultures, soaring over the prairies for hours at a time. So aviation may have only got off the ground through inspiration from nature. But over the next century, aviation engineers went their own way and ignored nature's designs. But many of our cleverest engineering solutions have exact counterparts in nature. 
For birds and planes, the hardest part of flying is landing or taking off. When a wing is moving slowly through the air, there's much less lift, making it harder to stay in the air. The engineering solution is to make the wing bigger by extending flaps at the rear. And nature does the same. A hunting barn owl flies slowly, listening for the slightest noise in the grass that might reveal the location of a mouse. In slow flight, its feathers are spread out to give it maximum lift. A bird can change the shape of its wing far more dramatically than a plane, giving the barn owl its ability to hang in the air until it pinpoints its target. These striking parallels between nature and technology meant that during the whole century of aviation, engineers spent a lot of time reinventing the wheel, or at least the wing. Now, with the birth of this new way of thinking, of bio-inspired thinking, engineers are looking to nature when designing the next generation of aircraft. These robo-gulls at Florida State University are radio-controlled models with wings that behave more like those of birds. These planes can change the way they fly, just like birds making them much more adaptable than conventional planes. This one changes the area of its wings in the same way as a bird does by sliding its feathers apart. Birds can also alter the angle of their wrist joints to change their flight characteristics. And so can this plane. With its wings in the wrist down position, the plane is less stable but very maneuverable. With its wings straight, the plane glides well and with the wrists up, it's more controllable and easy to land. This plane is steered by wing warping, a system abandoned by engineers shortly after the Wright brothers, because although very efficient, it needs constant adjustments and instantaneous reactions. All these planes fly, but because they behave like birds, they're very difficult to control. Evolution has turned the bird's brain into an ultra-fast control system. An onboard computer capable of making continuous, lightning-fast adjustments to wing shape and angle. Just how fast a goshawk's reactions need to be can only be seen when its dash through the trees is filmed from an onboard camera. The researchers from Florida State University really appreciated the goshawk's instinctive skill when they tried flying their robo-gulls by remote control. It took a lot of practice to keep these things in the air. But once mastered, these little planes are highly maneuverable. Meanwhile, at the Technical University of Berlin, scientists are using a specially designed wind tunnel to study a different aspect of bird flight. Attached to the front of this wind tunnel is another innovative design by natural selection. <laughs> 